So hello everyone and welcome back to another video and this is another overclocking basics video and this time it is about graphics cards and you can already see I've prepared quite a bit uh, on the uh, Microsoft Surface Pro 7 and we're gonna go over that uh, right now. Um, but first uh, I have changed something about the audio setup so if it sounds different now uh, that's why i can't really tell if it's better or worse than what i had before right now because i gotta use it at least one time so if the audio is different that's that is why so um first i'm going to go into this uh, q a section right here and talk about some of the common questions and also misconceptions that people have about overclocking graphics cards and if you don't want to see this um, there should be timestamps, so you can skip this part. I I might forget it. Uh, I hope I won't. So, uh, the first question that a lot of people have is, will overclocking damage or kill my graphics card? And, and that's like, no. Um, that's practically impossible. There are numerous security systems in place that prevent your card from getting damaged. And above all, there are not really any dangerous things that you can do to your card. The worst thing you could do is like lock the fans to 0% and make it overheat, but there's a security system for that as well, so the card will shut down before it gets too hot. So no, uh, there's really no damage you can do to your card when you overclock it. Um, there are some really rare exceptions like if you have a really really weak PCB with your graphics card you might overload the voltage regulator on it by overclocking which could result in um, the voltage regulator giving up the ghost and going up in flames but today's cards even the reference cards are decent enough even good um, that, so that won't happen if you have a really really old card or a really really cheap one yeah, that could happen, but it's in 99% of the cases, it's not going to happen. So the next question is, will it make my card run hotter or overheated even? Um, that's also a no, uh, because power consumption, so how much power the card pulls, is also how much heat it's going to generate. Um, that increases linearly with clock. So if you have something that runs at 2 GHz and you increase it, increase the clock by 100 megahertz that's five percent you're not gonna feel five percent like that's going to be oh it ran at 50 degrees now it's at 51 practically uh, the changing temperature of your room over the day is going to have a, a larger impact than that um, it does scale quadratic with voltage though so if you have a card uh, that can adjust the voltage um, that will be a noticeable increase. Uh, thing is just, on modern NVIDIA cards, you can't uh, really adjust the voltage. There is a voltage slider, but it actually doesn't increase the voltage. It's, it just allows the card to sit at the highest voltage for longer. On AMD, you can still adjust the voltage. In that case, uh, for this tutorial, because I really don't have that much experience with AMD cards, I'm just gonna say don't touch the voltage slider if you have an AMD card. So yeah, under that conditions, that's a no. Then, um, how much faster will overclocking make my card? Well, that really depends on what card specifically you have. There are some cards like the AMD Fury X, which notoriously is bad at overclocking. And there are some cards that can overclock a lot, like a GTX 980 Ti can do it a lot. Uh, I've found a GTX 1070 that can overclock a lot. Um, so yeah, it really depends on what card you have, and that can be 5 to 25%. Usually it's in the 10 to 17% range, and like, that's that's noticeable. Like 10 to 17%, if you have a game where you had like 50 FPS before, now you can get 60, or close to 60. Um, so yeah, that's um, that's a noticeable increase. But it really depends on what card you have, what cooler your card has, also what uh, components you have in your PC, because other components can slow your card down. Um, th that's called a bottleneck. We are going to go over that in just a minute. Um, so next thing, what happens if my card crashes? Because that 
can and will happen uh, while overclocking. Um, and the thing is, usually the driver can just recover. Uh, modern cards, both AMD and NVIDIA, the, the driver is smart enough to deal with a graphics card that's uh, producing errors. It will just reset, put you back on the desktop, like the benchmark you're running or the game you're running, yeah, that will close, but you're going to be back on the desktop and everything will be back to normal. Um, sometimes if you really overdo it, like if you put in a plus 1000 offset on the core or something like that, yeah, that's gonna result in a hard crash because then you've overdone it just too much. Um, then you might get a blue screen, a black screen, whatever. Like if you don't land back on a desktop, just press the reset button on your case. Your PC will reboot and then, yeah, it, sh it should work. Um, next question. What factors can affect the reward performance from overclocking a graphics card? Yeah, so we're back at the bottlenecks that I uh, spoke about and other factors. So there are a lot of things that can change how much extra performance you're going to see in the real world from overclocking your graphics card. There's cooling, what cooler your graphics card has, also how much airflow is in your case, how much heat the rest of the components of your PC will generate. Then there's bottlenecks. If you have a really slow CPU, overclocking your graphics card is really not going to do much because your graphics card will just sit around and wait for the CPU to do its thing. So having a faster graphics card won't really do anything in that case. And Bottlenecks are not really just CPU. The CPU was just an example. There can be a lot of things in your PC, like RAM, a slow um, storage drive, uh, that can slow down your performance. So, yeah, if there's something that slows your graphics card down, um, you might not get, actually, you might not get any uh, extra performance if your graphics card is just sitting around, even if it's not overclocked. Then PCB quality can also be a factor that's more of an advanced thing that I do most of my videos about, like uh, in-depth overclocking. So that again comes down to if you have a really cheap card, they ha tend to have really cheap components on their PCB. Those can't handle that much. Um, yeah, those just can't handle that much and your card will be slowed down because of that. And then there's also the factor of your vBIOS, so the BIOS of the graphics card. Uh, that can allow you or not allow you to do certain things. And then there's also background tasks uh, in your operating system. If you have a lot of garbage in the background, that might slow your performance down a lot. And if you get rid of those uh, background tasks, you might get a lot more extra performance. So then another question. If you overclock your graphics card, you will see that even though you tell it to run on a different clock, it will keep changing the actual clock that it's running at. And this is the GPU boost algorithm. At least Nvidia calls it like that. I don't know how AMD calls it, but essentially it's the same. Uh, it's an algorithm that very like uh, that adjusts your clocks of your graphics card depending on certain things. Um, for example, how hot it is, how much power it's pulling. If um, Basically, the algorithm just gives you the max performance that's like feasible in that moment. So if your card runs cooler than it was before, then your clocks will go up a bit because now it's cooler since when things get hot, they get less stable and you can't run that high of a frequency anymore. And yeah, overclocking your card won't disable that algorithm, but it's offsetting it. So your resulting clocks will be higher than before, but they will still fluctuate a bit. Um, then, uh, why can't I just overclock, uh, why can't I just copy overclocking settings from someone else who is running the same card on even the exact same model that I have? Um, that goes back to the first overclocking basics video that I made about silicon lottery. So if you want more information on that, just watch that one. The short uh, answer is every card is different and has different overclocking headroom. And therefore you can't just copy the settings, you have to find them out yourself, which is what we're going on, uh, what this video is essentially about. And now the last question that I could think of is, will it void my war warranty? Uh, there's been a lot of things related to overclocking voiding warranties uh, in over the last couple days, weeks. And sometimes manufacturers actually say that it does void your warranty if you overclock your graphics card or also other components. But the thing is, um, what we're doing while overclocking is just we're telling the, the card to run faster. And, oops, 
what did my tablet do? Um, we're just telling the card to run faster. And there's like nothing that, that, like the card doesn't change because of that. So if the card should die one day because of something that happened to it, the manufacturer, if you bring it back to them, if you arm eight, they, they, they can't go back and say, oh, you overclocked it because they can't they can see that you overclocked it. You're just telling the card to run faster and it's your PC that tells the graphics card to run faster. The card uh, is not saving uh, that thing anywhere. It's just every time you start your PC, the PC says, hey, graphics card, run a bit faster, please. So if you arm A the card and they want to test it and they plug it in into their own PC, it's just going to do what it does when it's not overclocked. So there's really no way for the manufacturer to determine if you overclocked your card or not. So practically it can't void your warranty because no one can prove you overclocked your card. Except when you do physical modifications like I sometimes do. Yeah, then of course your warranty is out of the window. But if you do normal overclocking like here, th that there's literally no way to, to just prove that you overclocked it. So no, it won't. And now where we have the Q&A uh, part out of the, yeah, out of the way, we can go to the next part of this video, and that's about the software that you're going to use for overclocking. So the the software that I use is GPUZ and MSI Afterburner. Uh, GPUZ is a, a useful tool to find out some information about your card. You can see I've already marked something there. And it just generally gives a lot of information about your graphics card. There's also CPU-Z, which does the same for your CPU. And then MSI Afterburner is the actual overclocking software that I'm using for this example. There are other overclocking softwares like EVGA Precision is uh, relatively uh, used a lot, though MSI Afterburner is the most common. And then there's some other tools that you should just avoid, like Asus GPU Tweak, because GPU Tweak is... Uh, it's not good, just avoid it. And um, yeah, and then this is about a special function of MSI Afterburner that I'm going to go into later. So um, you can download GPUZ on Tech Power Up and you can get MSI Afterburner well, from MSI. Once installed, um, you can open those up and in GPUZ, uh, there are some important things that you're going to look at. So the most important thing is this right here. That's your memory IC. So for memory type, it uh, tells you what type of memory you have. Uh, for this example, I used my RTX 2080 Ti in my uh, main rig. Uh, the RTX 2080 Ti uses GDDR6 memory, so it says GDDR6. But then after that, it says Samsung. And that's the manufacturer of the actual GDDR6 modules on the card that there are several manufacturers who make memory for graphics cards. For example, for GDDR6, there's Samsung and Micron. For GDDR5, there's also Hynix um, and Samsung and Micron. And for older GDDR5, there was also Elpida. Uh, at some point, Elpida went out of business and was bought by Micron. And what type, like what I see, because every manufacturer, yes, it's all GDDR6, but it's different types, the revisions of GDDR6, because every manufacturer has their own type of GDDR6. And um, so that's what I call the memory IC. And what manufacturer your memory is from uh, can tell you something about how it's going to overclock. And usually, rule of thumb is the best one is Samsung. So you can see I was pretty lucky because there's really no way to tell what memory uh, manufacturer you're going to have on your card. It's pretty much random. Um, and then the next best is usually Micron and Hynix and Alpida is pretty bad, which is probably why they went out of business. So if you look up in GPU-Z and see your memory um, IC, you can pretty much already tell how well it's going to be when overclocking. So if you find you have Samsung, you can expect your memory to overclock pretty well. If you find Micron, it's, well, not as good as Samsung. And um, yeah, that's one important thing. Then the other stuff, it's not important right now, so I'm going to skip over that and get back to it later. So here we have MSI Afterburner 
our software that we use for overclocking. If you first launch MS Afterburner, you're going to see this window pretty much. Sometimes it's going to look a bit different because MS Afterburner has different uh, skins, um, which is the option right here. Um, this one that I'm using is the default one as far as I know, but with different versions of MS Afterburner, they sometimes use different default skins and you can change the skin in the menu right here. So you can see which one I'm using. So if you want the exact same, just switch to that one. Then there's also some other um, parts of the menu that I've put in here. And the first one is just a general tab because you wanna check these two options. Uh, you wanna unlock voltage control and unlock mo voltage monitoring. And for voltage control, I select third party because my card is from Gigabyte, not from MSI. And it's also not a reference card. So if you have a reference NVIDIA card, you can use reference design. If you have an MSI card, you can use standard or extended MSI. Uh, extended MSI sometimes gives you extra options uh, if you have an MSI card. And if you have neither, an, neither a reference NVIDIA nor MSI card, just use third party, which is what I've chosen here. So um, the next tab is the fan, like the fan tab, and there you can create a custom fan curve, which I really, really recommend. Uh, so as an example, you can see the fan curve that I have. Mine is pretty aggressive. You can see it goes to 100% fan speed at 60 degrees already, because I really don't care about noise. I care about performance. So I'm I'm okay with my fans going up to 100% at just 60 degrees because I wear a headset all of the time, so I don't really care. You can change uh, the fan curve to your liking. Uh, it's just a more aggressive fan, uh, a more aggressive fan curve will give you better temperatures and most likely better overclocking results because of it. So, but coming back to the main window, um, this is where you do all your things. So you can see there are some clock readouts, some voltage and temperature readouts. Uh, if you do not check unlock voltage monitoring, this is going to be at zero all the time. Um, so yeah, that's what that does. And the unlock, unlock voltage control will unlock this slider right here. If you do not check this option, it will just be gray and you will not be able to adjust it. So the core voltage slider, you can see it says percent right here and it says plus zero. It's like actually percent. Um, on NVIDIA cards, the slider goes up to plus 100 percent, so to say. This is not going to double your voltage. It's actually not going to change your voltage at all. What this does on the newer NVIDIA generations, so 10, 16, and 20 series, this will just allow the card to stay at the highest voltage that it will stay by itself for longer, because NVIDIA cards will lower the voltage the hotter they get or the more power they pull. If you max the slider, you will allow the card to stay at the maximum voltage for longer, which will, um, yeah, it will help you overclock a bit because more voltage means you can run a higher clock. On AMD cards and older NVIDIA cards like 700, 900 series and older, um, that's not a percentage that you can actually put in an actual voltage. And um, for the NVIDIA cards, if, if the temperatures do not get too high, I usually just max the voltage. For AMD cards, uh, I'm just gonna say don't touch the voltage. Uh, I do not have enough experience with AMD cards for that. And usually NV AMD cards uh, are power limited so much that you actually want to lower the voltage. So undervolting, which is really, uh, really popular on AMD cards uh, to get a better overclocking result because, um, yeah, that's the power limit on AMD cards. Speaking of power limit, NVIDIA cards also have a power limit, and you just wanna max that slider. Max that out, you will see that the temperature will also go up, uh, the temperature limit will also go up because these are uh, connected together. Don't freak out when it says like 98 degrees on your temp limit. Realistically, your graphics card will never go there. It will throttle down in the clocks and voltages so much before it gets there that it will never go that hot. And even even if it should go that hot, it will just trip the safety function and turn itself off of thermal throttle uh, before it gets that hot. 
So yeah, uh, power limit just max that. For NVIDIA cards, oops, for NVIDIA cards also just max the voltage. And then we get to core and memory clock. This is the slider that actually changes your clock speed. So you can see we have two sliders, one for core, one for memory. And I usually start with core. And what we have here on pretty much, yeah, from NVIDIA card beginning with the 600 series, uh, with NVIDIA cards you have an offset. So at stock it says plus zero. And you can, you can drag the slider or you can also just click the number and put something in with your keyboard. Same goes for memory. Um, on AMD cards and all the NVIDIA cards, you do not have an offset, you do have the actual clock uh, that the card will run at, or at least will try to run at when the GPU boost algorithm is active, because all the cards don't have that sometimes. Um, so now the difference there, um, for my card and generally all NVIDIA cards around right now, uh, there's an offset. So I'm going to go with an offset here. And yeah, so going with an offset here. And then down at the bottom, you have your fan setting. So you can, uh, if you click this auto button right here, it will go gray and you will be able to adjust the slider uh, manually. So you can set just a static fan speed or by clicking this uh, little gear right here. Um, so there will no, uh, if you click that, there will be like a gray box around um, the slider that will enable your user specified uh, fan curve. Uh, if you do not check this, it will just continue using the stock fan curve. And then, oops, and then down here, the three buttons, oops, didn't want to do that, uh, the three buttons. Um, so the left one that I've marked is just, that's how you open the settings. This one resets everything to stock. And this one is the apply button. You click this one when you want to apply your overclock settings because it doesn't instantly apply if you change the slider. So um, now is the time where we could, yeah, now we get into actually overclocking this. And yeah, we had at 23 minutes already. Yes, this is a pretty long video. Um, and you can overclock in two ways. So this one is the easier way, but it's also going to leave you, give you lower performance in the end. But this is the very easy way. So um, this is a special function of MSI Afterburner called the OC Scanner. And what it does is it automatically tries to overclock your card. So by pressing this, uh, by pressing this button right here, you open this overclock, uh, yeah, this OC scanner uh, window, and by pressing by pressing scan, um, the program will now start to stress your GPU, will test different offsets, and in the end, it will give you an offset that it thinks is stable. It should be stable, but usually the offset is rather low, and it's not what your card is actually capable of. Like your card can usually go a lot further than what the uh, over overclock scanner gives you, but nonetheless, it's overclocking. It will make your card faster, just not that much. Uh, by pressing the test button, um, you can test uh, something that you put in. Um, I would not really use that. I would use an actual uh, stress test. Um, which ones to use, I'm going to get into that later when we get to manual overclocking. But yeah, by using the OC scanner, you can automatically try to overclock your card. And when the OC scanner uh, found result is active, it will say curve instead of an offset. It, it will just say curve there. So that's, you know, how it's active. And yeah, the curve is this right here. You can access the curve by pressing this, yeah, by pressing this button right here. And that will open this window. And this is the frequency versus voltage curve. And here you can also see your normal overclock and the auto overclock that the OC scanner finds. So this gray line right here, that's the stock clock. And then this uh, line with all the boxes, that's your overclock. Because um, this is sort of something more advanced that I'm not really going to go over. But every little box of these, you could uh, click on that and then adjust it up or down. So you can say, uh, I want this normal curve, but like when I'm at a certain voltage, I want more or less um, clocks than that. 
That way you can min-max your overclock a bit further and sometimes get a little bit extra out of it. But that's like a really advanced uh, thing. So I'm not really going to go into that. Now we're actually going to go into the conventional way of overclocking your card. So back in the main window of MSI Afterburner, I've already put down what basically is the entire overclocking procedure. So first we're going to max the power limit, just as I've said, max the power limit. Then we also max the voltage if you have an NVIDIA 10, 16 or 20 series card. If you have an older NVIDIA card, you can go as much with the voltage as your temperatures will be okay. If you have an AMD card, uh, I guess just don't touch it because I'm really not qualified to give recommendations for that because my experience with AMD cards is not good enough. And yeah, then also set your fan curve. You can overclock without doing it, but I just generally recommend setting a fan curve because usually the the stock fan curves the cards come with really, really favor noise and not cooling and your card will just run pretty hot, like over 70, 84 degrees sometimes and that's just way hotter than it has to be because like it's not even that much noisier if you increase the fan speed a bit. And so just also if you don't overclock, just set a custom fan curve, please. Um, but if you overclock, setting a custom fan curve will help you a lot. Uh, really, really a lot. But now we get to the actual overclocking. So I usually start with core clock and then get to memory. You can also start with memory and then get to core. Just don't adjust both at the same time because if you run into problems, you're not going to know what of the two clocks gives you the problems. Um, so what are we doing? So uh, I start with core, usually just with a plus 50 offset and then run a stress test. So what stress test do I use? Um, there's free software like the Unigine benchmark. So there's Unigine Heaven, Unigine Heaven, uh, yeah, there's Heaven, Unigine Valley, and Unigine Superposition. Superposition is the newest one, and I recommend using that if you want to use a Unigine benchmark. And then there's also 3DMark, um, which there is a free version of it, but you have to sit through the demo every time, and that's really annoying. Uh, but if you do have the paid version for 3DMark, you don't have to watch the demo and you can use uh, the 3DMark tests like Timespell or Firestrike to stress test your card. Um, but most users won't have uh, 3DMark, so I'm just going to say uh, use Unigine Superposition. So, and yeah, I start with a plus 50 offset and then just uh, let the stress test run, like let it run through all the way. You don't really have to run it uh, all the way at the beginning because usually at the beginning you're you're very very stable like plus 50 is pretty low compared to what most cards do um but if you if you get like close to plus 100 or like plus to to plus 80 even just run, let the entire benchmark run um maybe even run it multiple times if you really really, really want to know it's stable um but yeah so I start with plus 50 and then increase it by 10. Run a stress test and then repeat, increase that by 10. Stress test, increase that by 10, stress test. And I'm going to do that until it crashes. Yes, we want it to crash because we want to know where the boundaries are. So if it crashes, go back one step. So decrease it by 10. If it still crashes after that, because if you run a stress test for a while, your card is going to get hot. And as I've said before, heat does decrease your stability. So it might still crash. In that case, go down another step, uh, another step. And that's pretty much what your core is capable of. Uh, you might want to stress test a bit more, maybe run some games for a while and really heat up the card because having the card run full tilt for an hour is something different than a couple minutes in a stress test. Yes, it is a stress test, it's really heavy, but if the card runs for a couple hours when you're gaming, it's still something different. So maybe don't do something super important in your games uh, when, you've, when you have a freshly applied overclock because it might crash. And then uh, for memory, it's just the same thing. 
uh, just that I start with plus 300 and plus 500 on newer cards because memory clock just goes up way higher than uh, core clock. Yeah, and uh, for memory I just increase by 25, not by 10, because by 10 would take a long, long time. So I just do the same thing, but with 25 megahertz steps in instead of 10. And yeah, that's that's the same same procedure. And if you found your maximum stable clocks for both, you're pretty much done. Um, that's that's how you overclock. Uh, it's not really that hard. It's just try and error. It's just set something, test if it goes. If it goes, fine. If it crashes, well, you go back one or two steps, and then you are set. And that's pretty much how the procedure works. That's how you overclock. Now, if you want to compare your overclock, if you want to like um, want a second opinion of someone who might be more experienced. Uh, if you want to compare overclock, there's some other things you want to keep in mind. So what I see a lot, because uh, I'm really active on the Linus Tech Tips uh, Discord in the overclocking channel, and I see a lot of people saying, I got plus 89 on my graphics card. Is that good? The thing is, the offset doesn't tell me anything, because coming back to what I've marked here, uh, every card has a different base. So I've marked this boost value, this 1770 megahertz, as the offset base, because how the offset works, basically it takes this boost value and takes that plus what you've uh, put into um, into the card. That's not going to give you the exact clock that you will run at, because the GPU boost algorithm will still uh, play around with the clocks, and usually it gives you a couple megahertz more than what you would end up with just this boost value plus the offset. But the thing is, pretty much every card, every model of a, of a graphics card has a different value for this boost. And therefore, your offset is going to be different. So coming back to my card as an example, I have a plus 89 offset. And as you can see here, this brings me to 2085 megahertz. And that's pretty high, considering I'm below plus 100. If I had a Faunus Edition uh, 2080 Ti, I would probably be at one plus 150 or something, because the boost value for that card is much lower than my card, which is the Eros Extreme from Gigabyte. So the offset doesn't really tell you anything. What is important is this value right here, the actual clock that you run at. And that is the actual clock when your card is under load. So you can see right here, in, in the upper picture it says 420 megahertz. That's also completely useless. You want the actual clock that you get when you run a game, when you do a video render, when the card is actually working. So make sure to, to take that value when the card is actually doing something. And an easy way to get the card to display the maximum clock is to click this little question mark right here in GPU-Z. That will open up a little window that will render something and that will force your graphics card into the highest power state. Therefore, it will give you the clocks that your card has on the load. So if you don't if you don't want to run a, an actual test bench, just click this uh, question mark in GPU-Z and it will max out the clocks on your card. So a similar thing with overclocking uh, not overclocking, with comparing the overclocking uh, results for your memory, I would not use the ones from MSI Afterburner because sometimes it can be kind of misleading. I would use the value right here from GPU-Z because that value is more comparable between graphics cards. It still kind of depends on what memory type you have. So GDDR5 and GDDR6 will vary a lot, but Comparing between cards that have GDDR6 or cards that both have GDDR5 or 5X or 6X is about to come out as far as I know, um, you can use the memory value from GPU-Z. And yeah, that's pretty much it, all that I wanted to say about overclocking graphics cards. So I'm going to zoom out again a bit. Ah. If you want to make like a, a screenshot or something, um, I'm going to focus in on every 
on every part again. So here, if you the Q&A section, you can screenshot that. Here you have the middle section with the overclocking procedure, like you can get closer to that again. And then you have the, uh, the different interfaces. So here you have GPU-Z, you have MS Afterburner yeah, and the settings, and here you have the OC scanner and curve windows from MS Afterburner. And yeah, that's that's it. That's how you overclock graphics cards. And yeah, this video is already pretty long and I don't want to drag it out anymore. So thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this Overclocking Basics episode 2 about graphics cards. And until we see each other next time, goodbye.